Jolly good. Well, here we are back again for um, our weekly little chat, but this is actually going to be it for a few weeks because you're on holiday. I'm actually still on holiday in Reykjavik in Ireland, and I'm in a the hotel lobby. So um, there's music playing in the background. There's people walking past, loud voices, chatting. So apologies for all of that. Um, we'll just have to see how we go. I think um, Zoom's doing a good job of actually maybe suppressing that sound. Or I'm just yeah, I've got my some loud enough. NVIDIA broadcast that's cancelling out the sound, hopefully. All right, yeah. Very good. Yeah. So who wants to start this week? Oh, I don't know. Um, my question to you is because Iceland's a country I'd love to get to. Definitely in, in my bucket list. So I'm very jealous of you, Nigel. And well done, I think, on that pronunciation because you probably could have insulted a lot of people, <laughs> including many English-speaking Australians who probably think you're swearing at them. So good job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and, you know, is, is that another country? Because they've got, a, I, I think it's a, a country that's almost run solely or almost on renewables because of the thermic it, sort of stuff they've got there. Yeah, I think I saw the figures um, at a lecture by one of these anthropological type guys on the ship um, two yeah. days ago, and he was saying something like 75% of Iceland's power comes from yeah. um, thermal so the all the volcanoes yeah. and what have you. Exactly. I just I did a very quick uh, Google search and yes, fourteen point two terawatt hours a year, um, mainly from the Earth. Aren't they lucky? They are very lucky. Yes. Um, so I mean, there, Australia are there are electric cars there. Um, actually, yes. So let me just uh, show you. Um, uh, I've got to get to the right. Um, folder right here we go um i have seen a large number of teslas okay mm -hmm. now this just goes to prove the fact that teslas can't catch fire or electric vehicles don't catch fire this is um in um it's a Fyodor. i think i got that right um and it's the fireman's mode of transport so that's the fire one and going past me and i couldn't get the phone out to take the picture was a police yeah. car a tesla model y the same but it had got policy or whatever on the side yeah, yeah. Um, and i have seen a huge number of um uh, teslas here i've seen a few um uh, hyundai ionic fives yeah. And um, some uh, Nissan Leafs, would you believe? And here's another Model Y in the same place. Well, okay, Ugly. just stop, on the, just stop on the Nissan Leafs. The, just stop on the Nissan Leafs for a hot second. Hey, that's obviously a country where it's always cold, so thermal management is probably not an issue for Nissan Leafs in Iceland. Yes, just saying, just yeah. saying. And anyway. all <laughs> so... the um, fast DC chargers I've seen are yeah. 50 kilowatts. Um, yeah. and um, they've got Chadamo and CCS. Now, this was at yeah. a petrol station. There were four petrol pumps and seven DC fast chargers. Get out. They're getting Get it round out. right. No, absolutely. They've got it absolutely oh. right. Um, Can I just tell and, you, you're, you're, you've been away from all the you know garbage journalism that happened in Australia right now, and there's a lot of anti-EV stories out and about. And you know, like Channel Ten, for instance, did a story on um you know kind of electric vehicle adoption in Australia. And who do you think they asked as to whether or not electric vehicles are a good idea? Do, do, do you think they actually asked an electric vehicle owner? Um, no, they probably um, asked somebody who's got a big V8 petrol guzzler. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, the, the, uh, I, I, the, there's a story I'd like to talk to um, later on. So you, you yeah. go on ahead. And, okay, yes, well, and this was another, would you believe, we just got off the ship, walking down the road, not 50 yards, and I walked past yeah. this. And yeah. this is a 50 kilowatt DC charger. Now, if I can just zoom in a bit, the other interesting yep. thing was 
AC, and it's just a Type 2 plug, 43 kilowatts. What? What it car can... can take that? Yeah, but then when you read, and I can't zoom in close enough, it actually says just under the 43, 400 mm. volts, 63 amps, which is only 25 kilowatts. Ah. So I don't okay, know. But then good job. Good it has job. got the um, uh, DC fast charge. It's got Chadamo and um, uh, CCS there. So, yeah. you know, that was um, quite interesting. Everywhere I went, there was chargers. So many buildings, offices mm. and businesses had got one, two, three, six, eight EV chargers, destination chargers yeah. on the wall outside. Yeah. And there was the right. cars parked there, mostly Teslas, yeah. of course, charging. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. We've got a lot to learn in Australia. And it's supposedly oh. cold here, and EVs don't work so well in the cold, do they? No, no they don't. Oh, geez, what the hell? Hey, um, if you could give me permission, because that's a great segue for one of the stories I'd like to talk about today. Um, if you ask to the, share, uh, I yes. will allow it yes, for you. Please grant me yeah. permission, sir. And whilst we fill the time here for a hot second, um, uh, what what camera are you shooting on there, Nigel? Is that your Pixel Eight Pro? No, no, no. I'm using the grotty um, laptop camera. No, no, no. Not, not now. I mean, the photographs. Oh, I just showed those me. pictures. Yes, my um, Pixel Eight Pro. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, so, yeah, here's a, a story which I think is a really unfortunate sign of the times in Australia right now. Um, uh, EV. So the EV IE. That's the electric charging company. Um, they've put up a few people and I know one of those people personally and uh, it's um, disappointing that they've had to do this because the um, some of the charging business like home charging for instance um, hasn't yet matured as fast as they were hoping and um, it's meant that more than 30 staff have actually been made redundant and um, I think a lot of these charging companies like Chargefox as well and others um, they know full well that you know, eventually the majority of Australians will love their electric vehicles. It, it's just that a, there's so much negative press around and people are just really, really reluctant to purchase it because they've got so much fear that's fed to them. And uh, people just aren't buying electric vehicles like they probably could or should. Um, that's probably fault of government as well, where they're not subsidizing or, you know, supporting in the right sort of ways. Um, and yeah, it's disappointing that, you know, this story is in the driven, by the way, I think it's written, written by, uh, who was it written by? Apologies. It's, oh, Giles. Giles, one of the founders of the driven and others. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a bad sign of the times I feel that, you know, between the bad press that electric vehicles are getting, you know, shock stories around, oh, thousands of Teslas not sold, price cuts, the market is tanking and, yeah, uh, the, you know, the did EV you, charging networks are closing down. Yeah. Did you see that Ford have announced um, they're stopping building their EVs and they're now going to concentrate on hmm. um, uh, those hybrid things, basically <laughs> because they can't make any sodding money building their EVs yes. because they're so pathetic. And that's going to yeah. be a Kodak moment for them, I'm sure. Um, it might well be. I definitely yeah. see that for Toyota. But coming back to your uh, article there about um, mm. the charging companies, we had a discussion on one of the discussion groups I'm on. Somebody put up a post. I can't see how they can make money, um, these charging companies like ChargeFox and EV. And yeah. I would agree with them. It's very hard for them to make any yep. money unless mm -hmm. they go um, like that British company. I can't remember what it is. Um, that The first one they built had got about, 50 or 60 charges from 50 kilowatts up to 350 kilowatts. But they built a mm. coffee shop and a WH Smith bookshop and they had an that's, EV yes, section. Yes. And, you know, that's where they make the money. You ask any yep. petrol station owner, and I knew one who actually owned seven. And mm -hmm. I said, seven? Wow, you must make a lot of money. He says, I make diddly squat out of the petrol, but out of mm -hmm. each one, I can make between one and two hundred thousand dollars a year on the milk and the Mars bars and the chocolate and all the other bits. He says, I make wow. maybe 
five grand a year on the petrol. Jeez. So that's where these people are going to make the money. And I'm sure that that yeah. with people like Ampol are putting in their amp charge, BP with BP Pulse, they're putting yeah. them in their petrol stations. Now, when you go and get petrol, you fill up, you go in, you pay, you might pick up a chocolate bar on the way or a can of Coke, and that's where they're making the money. But if you've got yeah. to sit there for 15 minutes while your car's charging, you're going in, you buy coffee and a chocolate bar, and you'll spend some more money that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And uh, this is a thing too. It's all right. Um, I think there's a lot to be learned from other businesses and, uh, you know, a lot of these startups um, who probably have got some very good backers behind them see what the potential is going to be. And it's, it's quite tremendous, you know, like um, uh, in areas where there is not a lot of, uh, you know, curbside uh, parking or, you know, off-street parking where you can plug your own car and charge it. That's where the money is going to be made, right? So they need to focus their efforts also on those sort of zones. So they need to look to St Kilda. I'm just talking about Melbourne for a hot second. Um, Port Melbourne. Um, anywhere you've got a lot of apartments, that's where you've got to get your charges in because um, at the moment there's no really good supportive legislation that compels body corporates to allow charges to be installed and there's a lot of stupid barriers as we discussed in the past on this. They and, are. Um, I'm trying to put in charges in lamp posts at the side of the yeah. road. And I saw yeah. something then, interesting um, two days ago. You know how some mm -hmm. people run from their front door and take a cable, an extension cable across the pathway to plug into their car. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. One local council has now approved um, a little channel that can be dug at the owner's expense. And it's got mm -hmm. um, a uh, rubberized flat. And it's a little channel. So you can feed in your um, Type 2 cable and plug it yep. in. And it goes there. And then when you come, you unplug, you just pull. And the um, thing just opens up and allows you to pull the cable out. I was looking at that thinking, you know what? People who go, oh, I've only got roadside parking and I can't charge my car at home. Well, you bloody well can now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, I think... Um, they need to uh, I probably have a special permit system to make sure that you know people who have electric vehicles have you know the at first access to them say and it discourages people from icing them um because uh, yeah I can just imagine that you're a homeowner and uh someone who's a neighbor likes parking out the front of your house um with the you know internal combustion car it'd be really frustrating so yeah anyway there you go um and yeah going back to what you're saying before about was it ford yeah is, is that the car same car company who's supposedly losing for forty thousand dollars american in every car they build something like that is. not as much as lucid which mm -hmm. is something like a hundred and thirty thousand dollars a car <laughs> yeah yes yeah i wonder how much longer those guys are going to be around for I hope well, when I was um, in New York, I went into the Lucid showroom and the guy yeah. was really, I said, but you're running out of money. He says, no, 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 we've just been given another one and a half billion dollars from the mm. Saudi investment fund. And I'm thinking, wow. the way, way Peter Rawlinson's going through the money, that's not going to last a year. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. All right, now, uh, you're going to go next or is it me? Well, yeah, uh, this one um, really sort of um, got to me because I've been thinking about this myself a fair mm -hmm. bit. Um, let me just bring this up to share. I think I'm doing the right one. Here we go. Um, we've got um, Tesla with Elon Musk. Really getting yeah, very like political. So, you know, I don't want to get too political, but um, some buyers are being turned off by him. And mm -hmm. uh, speaking to quite a few people in my American journey and around Greenland and Iceland, a couple of people yeah. have said, well, I wouldn't touch him because of Elon. He's supporting Trump. Um, and so the ABC did this thing, and it's uh, they've only got one guy quoted there. But um, yeah. Tesla's brand health um, 
has worsened over the past two years and is now in negative territory um, mm -hmm. because um, Elon Musk is um, promoting somebody that a lot of people in the world don't actually like. Yep. So, um, you know, here's the car brand, um, other car brands and Tesla. Boom. Mm. So, you know, it started when he got Twitter um, yep. and then it's been going down and then he goes, um, yeah, I'm going to be working for Trump now. Yeah. 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 So, no, um, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, I've got, you know, all right, we, 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 we talk about Elon for a second, just appreciating that, you know, I think I said it before. Um, to me, I can separate the CEO from the company. Um, and that's because if you really delve into the Mark Zuckerbergs and the, um, you know, what's the guy who owns Amazon? I don't know. I forget his name. Yeah, He's got Bezos. too many yachts. Bezos. It's Jeff Bezos. Bezos. Thank you. Yes. Um, you know, he's got a lot of yachts and, you know, I don't know what these people are like personally. They're probably maybe not nice people. Maybe they are. I don't know. But, you know, I buy something from a company because I want something and I like it. You know, I, I don't buy or not buy because I don't like the CEO. That said, <laughs> I have unfollowed Elon on Twitter and I have stopped using Twitter quite a lot because if I scroll through there, I'm giving him ad revenue which in turn is maybe supporting him and his support of the Republicans. Yeah. Republicans, yeah. So, yes. Um, well, it's really I'm the same. Bad. I have decreased my Twitter usage, sorry, X, um, quite yeah. dramatically. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's supposed to be an unbiased, you can put any views up there. But all you get mm -hmm. is um, Trump, uh, well, Trump, but... Um, uh, Elon going, mm. um, Vice President Harris is a communist. Um, yeah. She's terrible. And and I'm going, mm. okay, look, that's your opinion. Um, mm. Other people have got other opinions, but where do you find them in there? It's supposed to be the town square, mm. which is what he keeps saying, yeah. but I can't find anything Definitely. other than um, MAGA mm. GOP rubbish on there. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, yeah. he's allowed um, previously banned people back onto Twitter, like ultra right wing uh, racists. Um, you know, even you could say some of Elon's um, t uh, tweets are actual, you know, seriously, very, very racist. And he seems to forget his South African heritage. Hello, Elon Musk. <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, you know, he's, he's anti-transgender. Is I'm I'm not liking Elon more and more each day, and I can understand why people who don't own Teslas why they might think, yeah, Elon Musk is Tesla. They they intertwine the two things, right? But in my opinion, and it's just my own opinion, Tesla's built by great engineers, very smart people, great designers, yeah, and they're the ones who are delivering the car, right? But I think if I were Elon, I'd, I'd be a bit worried because. If that's the trajectory of a car brand, you know, reputation, and if electric vehicle sales are down and the they're doing the cost cutting version of the Tesla Model Three for the Mexican, you know, market, right? Um, if, if the if the, the cars aren't selling and there's something wrong with the brand, the first person you look to is the CEO, and Elon can be replaced. He can be replaced. It's very easy. They just yeah. have to finance and, I mean, and he's look, gone. I, I'm getting peed off with Elon as well. But I still, mm. Power Wall 3, which has got LFP batteries, I'm going to get one or two of them. Well, yeah. And now, Good okay, idea. I'm not going to go, well, I'm going to buy a BYD battery to put in my house um, mm -hmm. because I think Power Wall 3s are better. Yeah. yeah so, no, the, the, you know, most everything what, that Tesla does is a class lead. I agree. Um, yes. And you know, I think that's a good strategy too, because sadly, uh, I'm pretty certain both New South Wales and Queensland now have introduced into the energy retail market that if you have got solar feeding in, you pay to feed in now. Yes. So, so in the past, we had pretty reasonable, sometimes very generous uh, feed-in tariffs like in Victoria. Uh, then it became pretty much on price parity. And then it got to nine cents and it got to six cents. And now in those two different states, you have to pay sometimes to feed into the thing. So yeah, unless I've you've got a battery, 
Yeah. So unless you've got a battery or you can definitely turn everything on in your household, it's hard to recommend to people now to go solar. It really is. And it's, it could happen in Victoria, maybe WA. <laughs> I You know, at the moment, don't the know. WA feed-in tariff is all of about 2.1 cents. Um, Wow. So generous. it's, that's pathetic. So I'm, Yeah. I've actually, we're, we're thinking of moving, selling up a house and buying a new one. Um, and I'm thinking if it hasn't got solar, I might not put solar on. I might just stick in a couple of Owl 3s Hmm. Hmm. and Okay. get And gain the that EV system. tariff here, which is $0.08 cents buy-in Hmm. um, between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Now, I can Yeah. charge up the power walls in that time and I can charge my car in that time. Um, and if I charge my car from zero to full and the Powerwall, two Powerwall threes from zero to full, um, that's 60 plus uh, 25, 85 kilowatt hours imported at eight cents at seven bucks. Yeah, there you And go. then the Powerwalls can run the house for the rest of the day. Damn straight, they can. Yeah, that'd be a good exercise, um, Nige. That'd be definitely a very good exercise. And apologies, you probably hear my dog outside who wants to now come inside. <laughs> I'm with you. We, we've got a time limit here. We're going to stick to it. We've, we've got So a time let's push limit, through. so yeah. Let's push through. Do you Anyway, want to this do is the it. next one? I'd love to because, you know, I, I really want competition and I want Ford to stay doing electric and I want Cadillac and I want anyone and everybody to come in the market. And goodness sake, whilst I'm thinking about it, VW, why do you keep pushing back the ID plans for Australia? So now, by the way, the buzz might be late this year. I think it's going to slip into next year, if you ask me, um, But have because you they've seen just... the price that they've put on the ID buzz? No, what? It's 69,000 American in America. Yeah, And and that's it's got it, a nine, right? 91 kilowatt hour battery, I think, and it will do just over 300 kilometers. I mean, that is pathetic. Yeah, it is. Yes, definitely. So that It's would it's translate to be 130,000, 140,000 by the time it gets in here for a yeah. 300, 350 kilometer range. What Yeah, the no, actual. the fun, the fun concept, right? But also Yeah. the ID uh, three and four being pushed back and pushed back, and now it's 2025. It was going to be 2023, for goodness sake, and now we're looking at 2025. Anyway, moving off, Cadillac Yeah, I seems look. to be really into this, I like but the let me Cadillac. give you a tip. I don't like the price. Yeah, same. I agree. And, uh, you know, so if you live in Sydney, you will be able to go visit The new experience center. And um, there's a few photographs. This is just a press release here. Um, so I'll put a, I'll send you a link, Nigel, so you can put it in the show notes for the viewers. And looks pretty damn nice. Looks very nice. It, it Oh, we can looks get bigger pictures. very nice, but it isn't going to be cheap, is it? No, it is not going to be cheap. Um, but no matter what Cadillac you buy in Australia, it's not cheap. You know, it's not like the Americans. They can get them a lot cheaper than what we do. You know, But I mean, yes, I think it is that. a very nice vehicle. Um, Mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll wait and make more comments when I know how much they're going to be selling it for here. Yep. Definitely. All right, cool. So yeah, I thought I'd share that one with you because you know that's a it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Nice one. All right, you got another story, or should I do another one with the MG Cyberster? Oh, go on, do the Cyberster, which is another nice car, Yeah, which is also yeah, an very expensive nice. jobby. Now, I, I, I got to say, I got an invitation to attend this. Um, and actually, I believe, I'm pretty certain because I saw some uh, social media like Facebook posts, um, some dealers are actually getting the cyber to, to um, you know, go kick the tires on at maybe your local MG dealership. So give them a call if one is near you and say, are you getting the cyber on display there? And they might tell you, yeah, come have a look. Um, Yeah, because I like the scissor I would doors. love to jump into this. Love it. Isn't it a fun It's looking a car? very nice looking car, and um, Definitely. you know, and it does naught to a hundred in three point two or three seconds. Is it Oh, maybe I'll, I'll find the time in a second. I'm just looking at these three pictures point because, two yeah, seconds? There it is. there you go. Seventy-seven All right, kilowatt I'll find hour battery. that. Yeah, look at that. Look at that indicator. It's like move out my way. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm going that <laughs> way. <laughs> exactly. Um, no, it's very exciting. Um, next, Ooh. end of next week, just before I leave for overseas, I'm going to be jumping into the M uh, MG4 X Power. Um, so that'd be great. But that will mean my story won't be out to the end of September, whatever. Um, but I I want to jump into one of these. So note to self, contact MG. And maybe Nigel, you should come back through Sydney and get him to give you a car for a week. Well, tell them you yeah. drive it. Tell them you drive it to oh, WA yeah. for. Them. Yeah, our flights are already booked from um here to Singapore and Perth, so won't be going oh, through. Look, Sydney. Look, look. There's a national road show. Here you go, folks. We are 22nd of August. So, um, hmm, where yeah, are we so now then? Scrolling down, is it going to come to WA? Uh, Queensland. WA, look at that, John Hughes. Yeah. September 23. Will you be, you'll be home, yeah? Oh, yeah, we get home um, four or five days from now. Go kick those tyres. Yeah. So there you go. So fantastic. And like there was a post to, and I'll just quickly search it. So I'll stop sharing my screen. I'll search it. The uh, people over in WA are losing the, you know what, uh, because they spotted the um, Tesla Cybertruck on the back of a, you know, a car ferry yes. truck thingy. Yeah. Um, heading going over across to the your... Yes. So I've already know, maybe seen one of the satin ones over there. <laughs> ah, you, you, were you able to get inside one, weren't you? I got inside you, one, yeah, in the New you York. Can't, you can't Tesla do that in Australia. Showroom. Yep, you can't do that in Australia. Oh, no, you that, can only walk around. You. Oh, I got you can to walk around. You can't get Play. it. Couldn't well, take a test drive. Oh, damn it. One job, Nige. <laughs> <laughs> and I did see right. quite, uh, two driving around the streets in New York. Wowza. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Fantastic. So, yeah, well, that's it for yeah. mine. The um, MG uh, Cyberster is a nice one. So uh, lovely. So mm. I came across something a few days ago while I was just messing around on the ship. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought, what the hell? This is in Lund in Sweden. Okay. And there's a company there called Elon Road. Yeah. <laughs> please no 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 for yeah. all the god please no oh yeah no, it all is right. called Tell elon road now Tell us this more. Is, um basically you know the skeletric sets where you had your two channels and the yeah, car yeah. went on and it had little brushes well that's what they've done in a road in a test road so you can charge your car up or your bus as you drive that's along true. And I'm just thinking, what a complete, utter waste. There is no need for this. There is no need. Oh, and and you've got these brushes case. that come down um, and rub against the uh, contact in the road. And that each is so bit is um, separate. And what happens is as the car goes over, it detects the car. So it turns on the power in that section. And as the car leaves, it turns the power off. So, I mean, that's quite clever. Otherwise, you'd be walking across the road and your eyes would light up. Um, <laughs> yeah. but I, but there'll be I, some fool who will actually find a way around that, Nigel. Just your way. The Darwin Awards yeah. are always out every year. Right. So, um, yeah, that was something that um, I thought this is a complete waste. Now, I know people are putting um, – they're building roads with the um, – uh, what's it in it? Um, the well, induction starting. things. Yeah. So you can drive over. But I cannot yeah, but bit, honestly yeah. Yeah. see the point yeah. in it. When I was in little, 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 Norway, I think it was, buses would yeah. pull up and there was a contact over and the bus would stick up its pantograph and it would be yeah. charging whilst it was sitting there. Yeah. There you go. And it would be yeah. there for five, ten minutes, maybe half an hour, and then it would go and drive off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see that in my local station, not that system, mind you, just the fact that um, at uh, Water Gardens, where I live near, um, the buses there um, wait, you know, with the timetable and they depart when they're supposed to depart. So the buses sit there with the engines rumbling, spewing out toxic fumes and 
running their air conditioners and all that. And they then can maybe 15, 20 minutes later when it's due for it to go, they would depart, right? And this is the classic example where this could be installed and they could be electric and they could get a bit of a recharge and yeah. we wouldn't have the diesel toxic fumes happening. And that's yeah, I mean, school out. buses stopping outside schools, leaving the engine running, poisoning all those and the parents. kids. And yeah. the parents. And the parents. Oh, well, these things <sighs> happen. Um, so, yeah, I thought but, Elon Road, that's a good name for a company. And it's in Lund, yeah. Sweden. So I thought no, yeah, that was a bit of a fun no. one. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. You know, a um, story I appreciate this last week. Um, this is a uh, YouTube channel. Um, I don't know they do more than that, but I'm pretty certain it's um, just a YouTube channel uh, called Fort9. So F O R T 9. Look them up. If you, you're into motorbikes, um, anything with two wheels with a motor, uh, look them up. They, they do brilliant content. Uh, the main guy knows his stuff about bikes and um, he he tells it, it's, it's always a straight story with him. He, if he says a bike is great, you can guarantee it, it's good. And it, he was he won't, uh, if there's a company out there um, who puts out anything slightly garbage, he'll say it as such. And he has no fear, absolutely no fear. And the videos that they produce, by the way, just stunning, like beautiful to look at. Um, lots of cutaway shots, different shots that you just won't even see on a mainstream uh, professional production, like extraordinary work that these guys do. Um, they're a big channel. I think he's got a million right. subscribers or more. And yeah, if you like if you like the two vehicle things, you know, go for it, right? But anyway, he made an excellent point and is this, right? So we know that battery electric vehicles, um, like commercial, heavy um, even now we're getting the big, big vehicles in, you know, mines, uh, the massive excavators, the tip trucks and all that. Uh, we're getting trains. We can demonstrate just by chucking a load of batteries into something that you can haul, you know, like with a Tesla truck, you know, the semi, you can haul stuff a thousand kilometers. You need not have a charging road. You need not have it. Yeah. No. And no. That's because those those vehicles, they had the capacity, the space to actually house the batteries. And so the technology is great. It's, we're at our sweet spot. And sure, as battery density improves, the, the cars become lighter and they can both go further. Okay, well, but, but for motorbikes, it's still a problem where there's yeah. not enough space. And, you know, he, he made an excellent point in this, in the late, the latest story. I'll, I'll leave you a link, Nigel. It's, it's a great video. I have a watch of it. And he, and he said, you know, the problem with electric motorbikes now, and the reason they're failing and they're not actually doing well, and a lot of companies are, are going bust and, um, uh, you know, Livewire and all the others, Harley Davidson, uh, is because they're only offering up something you can do 100, 120 kilometers. Yes. And most motorcycle riders, and I was one of them, um, you know, you, you like to go for a ride and you would do a few hundred kilometers on a weekend. You're like, well, a nice little, you'll go for fish and chips down <laughs> a mountain somewhere just because, you know, that's what you because do. Because you could, and yeah. You could, exactly. And um, when you've only got 100 kilometers of range and or let's say you do dirt biking and you're going to be, you know, doing this sort of crazy shenanigans, you're going to chew through that battery a lot quicker. So electric motorbikes are the only electric vehicle right now that realistically is not a good recommendation because we need the technology to improve. But I can tell you what we don't need improving is our bloody roads. <laughs> we don't need things it's built into these... the roads. This company, Elon Road, yeah. claim that if this get takes off and they do thousands and thousands of kilometres, we can have cars mm -hmm. with smaller batteries, they'll be lighter and they'll be cheaper. They're coming. But what <laughs> happens coming. when you want to go off the road that they're not charging? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you going to pay for something like that across the Nullarbor in Australia for a no. you know, 500 kilometres? No. no, you're not. So no, I honestly think it's um, a bit pie in the sky. Yeah. So, look, I think we need to start looking at wrapping it up. Um, yeah. But a couple yeah. of things. Firstly, um, go and have a look for Chris van der Stock's YouTube channel. He's got a good one. Um, and we've got like and subscribe down below. And please make any comments you like, providing they're nice. Um, otherwise, I'll just delete <laughs> them, you buggers. 
Um, now, although I've been on holiday for the last three or four weeks, and we've sort of managed to get some um, uh, some recordings in, you're not available next week, Chris, are you? No, mate. And then and I'll be in then you're going. Then you're going to Japan. Yeah. And, um, on holiday for a few weeks. So we might not have um, one for um, a few weeks. So maybe I'll just have to do a chat with myself. <laughs> well, you could you, you you could find someone. You, you find someone. I, I can find something to chat about. It might not be anything to do with electric vehicles or renewables, but I'll find something to have a chat about. <laughs> oh, you will. You will. You, you you should get Linda on, and she can share her um her her side of the holiday stories. Oh, <laughs> she'll yeah. be like, she'll be like, oh my god! And then he took photographs of a electric vehicle charger. Yes. <laughs> Would you believe? Yeah. 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 We we walked off the ship um in I think it was Akureyri in Northern Iceland mm -hmm. a few days ago, and we'd been walking for about um five minutes. And she said, oh, thank Christ, we haven't seen any EV charges for you to take pictures of. And I go, hold on a moment, dear. You see on the other side of the road, there's two big mm -hmm. porridge boxes. Guess what they are? She goes, bugger. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do So guess Stop. what? I walked across and took a picture of them. Can I tell <laughs> you, right? You know, can, can, can I give a fellow YouTuber a shout out? He doesn't need it because he does great content and it's called Not Just Bikes. Have you ever watched his videos? He's an American who lives now in somewhere in Europe and he comes uh, from uh, the new Amsterdam in, can in Canada, I believe it is. And he, I believe he's a road engineer or a civil engineer and he knows his stuff about, you know, how, how we can support better worlds to live in, yeah? So that means... Uh, better bike paths, say, and more um, uh, public transport and stuff like that. He does really great um, uh, video essay stories on whatever. Uh, so look him up. He, he's, he's, yep. he's, I kid you not. You, you think yourself, I'm not going to watch a video for half an hour about a train station. At the end of it, you'll be a convert. <laughs> he just makes uh, it interesting. And, um, you. you know, when, when I'm in Japan, you know what I'm going to be doing? I'm, I'm going to be geeking out about the Eki. That's the train station. Hey, uh, Eki wa doko desu ka? Hey. Anyway, we're part. about to run out of time on the Zoom <laughs> thing because I've only got the 40-minute free version, not the several hundred dollar unlimited version. So uh, uh, thanks very much, Chris. Um, <laughs> see you, you again. And um, it will right. be in a few weeks when you get back from Japan and you can tell me all about it. And do yourself a favour. Make sure you have some Icelandic vodka. Best in the world. Look for yes. the one with the little thing in the tube. There's a little <laughs> grass stick in it. <laughs> all right. I will. Thanks very right. much, Chris. Cool. See you in a few Cheers. weeks. Bye. All right. Thanks. Nick. Bye. So. There you have it, a quick recording with Chris and I, and he won't be around for a few weeks. So I'd like to invite people along to my next week's meeting. So if you're interested, um, make a comment below and um, I might send you an invite. We can have a little chat. Um, and uh, if you really want to do it and you donate some Kofi money, then I'll guarantee you'll get on. <laughs> All right, so thanks very much, and I'll see you very soon.